Hey guys, Terrence from Chargeback Forward here. Ah, finally, we've come to the end of the pre E3 festivities. I've already covered Microsoft's press conference as well as Sony's press conference. Links are below, guys. Check them out. I share my thoughts. Those of you that know me and know my tastes will probably have a good idea as to which way I swayed, but we'll save that for another video. Right now we're talking about Nintendo. This is the first time I've actually watched a Nintendo Direct video. Let me tell you how impressed I am. It was concise. It was informative. It was polished. And best of all, it was not 90 minutes. Also, no ridiculous antics of Wii music and some idiot drumming the air with Wiimotes. So, we were greeted by the president of Nintendo, and I actually initially first watched the Japanese version for a couple of seconds to get a feel, and I was really impressed that he did both. I know the guy speaks English, but still, I love the effort that they put forth. And again, he didn't seem completely robotic like that idiot from Microsoft. So the first game that they showed was actually two, Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. What am I watching? Oh, I've never played Pokemon. I know Pokemon is huge. I'm not gonna diss anybody that plays Pokemon. Not my thing, not for my generation, but still, I understand that is Nintendo's bread and butter through and through. They can tank all they want with the Wii U and thanks to Pokemon, it's not gonna matter. So anyways, two new Pokemon games coming out later this year on the 3DS. And then they start talking about a new class or something, fairy, and then I saw a character I kind of recognize, Jigglypuff, and, and then I happened upon a song. Huh? What's that? What's that? What am I watching? Next on the list was Super Mario 3D World. I was a pretty big fan of the 3DS offering Super Mario 3D Land, and my only gripe with that game was the level seemed a bit short. So hopefully with this new game it's going to be more expansive, and considering it's a local four-player optional game, I guess that's going to be the case. I had a thought though. Nintendo seems to be positioning Super Mario more and more to the furry fetish. So I'm really surprised that this game is most likely going to get an E rating because there's some sexual, you know, undertones going on there. And the latest suit offering? Meow! There seriously needs to be a hiss thing. So the new suit's cat. Everybody wears the cat suit. And it's kind of funny because scratches and kind of pounces and climbs walls and all that. So, um, I like to see the Mario games continue to be innovative. A lot of people are disappointed that we're not seeing Galaxy 3 this year, but you know what? Anybody that's played Super Mario 3D Land knows that Super Mario 3D World is probably going to be a good game. Princess Peach is a playable character. Cool. And I especially like the fact that they emphasize that all the characters have different strengths, and so I'm getting a super Mario Brothers 2 feel with her kind of floaty jumps and whatnot, but of course the question is, now that she's a playable character, who's going to be kidnapped? Maybe they should go for like a different kind of theme, maybe. There's this one cool scene where it looks like they're doing bumper cars, but they're in giant boot skates. It's really weird. And there's also one scene that showed um, Mario riding a Loch Ness Yoshi? What? And to cap things off, when they show the logo reveal at the end, you hear this really weird meow sound, and I immediately thought of the cat from Shenmue. Am I the only one, guys? 
honestly. So that game is coming out December this year, so they are bringing out a big Mario title for the holidays. Good move, Nintendo. You really need this. Next up on the list was Mario Kart 8. Looked really impressive. Haven't really liked Mario Kart for many years, actually, to be honest with you. My favorite is still the original on Super Nintendo. But I got a kick out of this new gravity thing going so you can drive on courses that go sideways and upside down. They also brought the motorcycles back. Uh, I know Mario Kart is a huge fan favorite, so this is uh, really exciting news for a lot of people. Doesn't look like they're making the holiday release this year, but it is coming out next year, and from what I've seen so far, looks like it's worth the wait. We party you. We fit you. Both games were delayed to October and December, respectively, but I really got a kick out of Iwata-san apologizing and giving a very humble bow for the delay in games. It was a very nice touch. One thing that's really surprised me about the Wii U is the art community that has developed from it. They at Nintendo say they weren't expecting it to be to this extent. You kind of have to wonder though, it's really cool. Big Mike's done some really cool drawings on, uh, on the Wii Pad. And uh, just through that conference, I've seen many great things. So they're actually releasing something called Art Academy. I guess for people that are in the Me Universe, art community is like a dream come true pastels, uh, paints. What do they call those things? Color pencils, crayon pencils, you know what I'm talking about. It's, it'll come to me later and I'll feel like an idiot. But the art that I've seen that they displayed was awesome and that's so cool that it's given another avenue for the gaming community to be creative. Next up, they showed a trailer of what third-party developers are up to right now for the Wii U. You had some games that were expected, some cross-platform titles like Assassin's Creed and the new Batman, but my eye always gets caught by Rayman, and the new game Rayman Legends looks beautiful. There's a new Scribblenauts game coming out called Scribblenauts Unmasked, and it's like a DC Comics themed game. I think Scribblenauts is getting a little out of hand. I love the first one on the, the DS. Yeah, the DS. Haven't really gotten into it ever since. I don't know, still feels like a little big planet kind of thing, you know, expanding and spanning until it oversaturates, but whatever, man. For people that enjoy it and people that enjoy DC, it's coming together. They showed quick footage of Pixar's Planes, which is an upcoming movie. I think it's next year it's out. They showed a plane flying in a canyon approaching a floating ring, and I couldn't help myself but laugh because all I could think of was Superman on Nintendo 64. I hope this game plays better than that probably will. They also showed Watch Dogs and it made me think what integration of the Wii Pad could they utilize for us. I've been waiting for something to make me go wow about that about that controller of theirs, that huge tablet, because if you're just playing a normal game on it or a few swipes here and there, it, it doesn't really appeal to me. But a game like Watch Dogs, I'm really interested. Moving the camera around maybe, pinpointing stuff. I don't know, I'm not a game developer, so I'm not even gonna to try to be creative on that one. But still, we'll be keeping my eye on that version. Sonic Lost Worlds, wow, I saw footage of this a couple of days ago, and it's available, or will be available, on both the Wii U and the 3DS. Both versions look awesome. If there was ever a game that would say, Terrence, buy a Wii U, it would be Sonic Lost Worlds at this point. It was nice that they mentioned uh, you know, a commitment to any developers, as well as the eShop, because a lot of games come our way digitally, and I know this is a big thing, but you know what? When it comes to indie developers and smaller games that wouldn't really be successful in a physical distribution, online is the way to go. And there were a couple of cute little gems in there that I saw, including Shovel Knight. It looked like an 8-bit game, and that always catches my eye, so I'm going to be checking that out. There was also a game called Spin the Bottle. What kind of world do we live in that you can't get a bottle to play Spin the Bottle in the real world? Next up on the list was The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. A game that admittedly I didn't play when it was originally released on the Nintendo GameCube. That being said, it looked absolutely stunning. From what I remember, 
the Nintendo Direct video was in 720p, so I can only imagine it looking that much better in 1080p. Also, uh, because of the the fact that they're not going to bother linking the Wii U with the Game Boy Advance that came up with this new idea that is essentially message in a bottle. So you can write a message on a piece of paper in the game, shove it in a bottle and throw it out to sea and other people can find yours and you can find other people's. So I can see that being like amazing for the possibilities of jokes and you know whatever people can come up with so I'm looking forward to that I'm looking forward to that Nintendo man you're getting my interest they also showed the wonderful 101 which had been referred to uh, on our comments of another video previously or on our Facebook or Twitter and I never heard of it before so when I saw it in action it was pretty crazy a group of people running around fighting giant monsters and using the people to create huge weapons um, there's like a shopping feature in the game which I really hope is based off of in-game collected points or currency as opposed to uh, paid DLC because if that's the case there's no chance but hopefully Nintendo doesn't seem to be that type of company I want to get my hands on this one and play it's kind of funny where you can choose the, the size of the weapon based off of your the length of your stroke on the gamepad. Uh, we'll see, right? We'll see. Still looking for innovative ways to using the Wii pad. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Chill looked amazing. It was so rich in detail and texture and music. I wanted that video to go on for at least five more minutes. I've never been the biggest Donkey Kong Country fan. Hell, I think the only Donkey Kong game I played was that stupid bongo game. But after seeing this and the fact that I do enjoy platformers, again, getting excited. Bayonetta 2 was shown. First in a cutscene, then in limited gameplay. And limited I only mean in the span of time. Uh, what can I say about the cutscene? Cross shot. What can I say about the gameplay? Crazy. They showed an open world RPG with the name X by Monolith. Which... I'm pretty sure it's going to be another chapter in like the Xeno Saga or Xeno Chronicles or Xeno Gears or whatever it's called. It was just the X. Uh, looked cool. It was uh, open world. You walk around in towns, countryside. You can get into mechs and fly around, fight enemies, whatnot. It was pretty brief, but it looked pretty interesting, and especially to the uh, Operation Rainfall crowd. Uh, I can see that turning some heads. Last game they showed was, not surprisingly, the new Super Smash Brothers. Again, uh, I played the original Super Smash Brothers. I played the one on GameCube, and that's kind of like where I left it. For me, it was kind of weird where it wasn't deep enough of a fighter for me, but at the same point, you know, like I, there's fighting games that I find to be too deep, and I just, you know, if it's not Virtual Fighter, I lose interest. But from what I saw, it looked really cool. It was really cool how they, it's coming out on both the 3DS and the Wii U, and that both has kind of distinctive looks. Where when they were doing the cutscene kind of intro for the 3DS version, I actually felt like reminiscing about Street Fighter with the stylized lines around the characters and whatnot. And then when it was time to kick it up to the Wii U version, they shut off that and it was pristine high resolution character models, really cool. They've added a couple of new characters, um, the Wii, F Wii U fitness instructor apparently, I just saw a picture of that before I uh, recorded this video. They've also added a villager from Animal Crossing, it, kid, kid looked really creepy, kid looked really, really creepy. Speaking of creepy, I forgot to mention with Bayonetta, the the footage or the trailer ends with the shot of this kid. What's it with creepy kids? Honestly, like let's think about this in logistics. Obviously, I'm not going to condone violence against anyone or whatever, but if you're stuck in a, in a horror movie setting or in a game where the antagonist is some demonic possessed little child, treat it like a football and punt it. The last character, I swear I felt Rob Man's romance explosion all over my face when I saw it and I had a feeling it was coming. Mega Man with many man powers from his different opponents will be in the new Super Smash Brothers. I know that's got a lot of people excited. I'm probably going to pick up that chunky ass controller to give it a shot at Big Mike's. Unfortunately though, we're going to have to wait till next year to play it. but. With Nintendo, I'd rather these guys take their time in developing things. 
I'd rather have any developer take their time, develop it properly, make it come out so it's a playable, polished game at launch as opposed to a mess that needs an update right away and probably that update won't fix it. Here's looking at you, Gearbox, Alien Colonial Marines, so happy they cancelled that piece of shit on the Wii U because I just can't stand to look at that game anymore. Really disappointed. In closing of the Nintendo Direct, Iwata-san showed us behind the scenes of the E3 booth, which looked really cool. It was big. It's uh, it was, actually, I don't, I'm not sure if they really changed too much. Uh, when I was at PAX, the booth looked similar. Back in 2006, when they unveiled the Wii U and Sony unveiled the PlayStation 3 in, this, in the Nintendo booth, it felt similar as well. So it was cool, he showed us around, and I really appreciated that little personal touch. They also mentioned that you can play select games that are being on the floor at E3 at select Best Buys in North America, so I think that's kind of cool as well. You know, especially me, I live like a three minute walk from one, so hopefully they'll have it there and I can check out some games. In closing guys, uh, really impressed with Nintendo's uh, direct video. Never seen one before. I liked how concise and polished it was and it had a very Japanese feel to it which I really appreciated after having my senses just assaulted yesterday on Monday with the two big press conferences coming from Microsoft and Sony. Well that about wraps it up for our coverage of the pre-E3 conferences slash direct video. Was a good experience. I'm happy to have done this. This is the first for Chargeback Forward. Had the opportunity to actually kind of see things in a timely manner and despite my horrendous upload speed, get the videos out to you as soon as possible. Hopefully I can get Big Mike to come in and we can do a video wrapping up E3. The aftermath, the fallout, how the scape of gaming has changed, come to think of it. Sony has a game console. Nintendo, as we've just talked about, has a game console. Microsoft, though, still not sure what they're doing. And as it stands right now, unless they go back on everything that they said they're going to do, well, I think we'll save that one for a future video. I just wanted to take a moment to thank all our viewers for continuing to watch and leaving comments in the thread below or on Facebook or Twitter. We love hearing what you guys have to say, so keep those coming. Tell us your thoughts. How did Nintendo do with their direct video? Did they hit it out of the park? Did they fumble it like Microsoft? Or did they just do okay? Next week, we'll return to our regular time of 7 p.m. Eastern. But until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Enjoy E3 and enjoy being a gamer. My name is Terrence, and this is Chargeback Forward.